Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Hope you're having a good day so far. Uh, we're gonna learn a couple of Rashi's from our Aliyah today, which is the fourth Aliyah in Parsha Svayas Hanan. Um, Debbie, your background is right on point. Uh, this Aliyah, we uh, read the Aseris Adibros, the second version of the Aseris Adibros, uh, the first one being in Parsha Yisro. And uh, one of the Aseris Adibros, of course, is the Mitzvah of Shabbos. And um, the Mitzvah Shabbos is phrased slightly differently here than it is in Parshas Yisro, which is the first Rashi we're going to learn. Um, so Torah tells us here in Vayaschana, as Moshe is recalling the experience of Matan Torah and recalling the Aser Sadibros, he says, Shamor is Yom HaShabbos L'Kad Show, Kasher Tzivcha Hashem Lokecha. Shamor, you should guard the Shabbos and keep it holy. Uh, just like Hashem had commanded you. And then the details of that are you should do all your work in six days. Um, the seventh day you should rest. Everyone should rest, your children, your servants, your animals, etc. We'll come back to Apostle in a minute. So Shamor, of course, Rashi points out, in the first set of the Asteris of Dibros, the Torah says, Zachor is Yom HaShabbos L'Kadshu. You should remember the day of Shabbos and keep it holy. And over here it says, Shamor. And Chazal teach us, Shnehem bedibor echad, uveteva achas namru. Both of them were stated as one. For us, human beings, they have to be distilled into two. Written uh, differently in Yisro and Vayaschana and Zachor and Shamor. But they were actually stated by HaKadosh Baruch Hu, miraculously in one voice. Uveshmiya uh, achas nishmau. And miraculously, they were able to be uh, heard in one voice. So there was the miracle of Harsinai, but even the human ear was able to capture both words at once because they really are two components, two halves of the total picture of Shabbos. Zahor and Shamor, the positive commandments of Shabbos, the negative commandments of Shabbos, as we say in Lachadodi as well, Zahor v'Shamor b'Dibor Echad, uh, reflecting that Mamar Chazal and this Rashi over here, which points it out. Kasher Tivcha Hashem as Rashi points out, what is kasher tziv chashem alokecha? All of this is kasher tziv chashem alokecha. All this whole parsha is a recounting of all the mitzvahs which Hashem had commanded us. So why tell us over here that we should keep Shabbos kasher tziv chashem alokecha? As if to say that before the experience of Matan Torah, Hashem had already commanded us to keep Shabbos. And that's exactly what Rashi points to. Kasher Tzivcha is not a reference back to Matan Torah, because that's the entirety of this experience. But Kodem Matan Torah, it actually refers to a time when God commanded us in Shabbos before Matan Torah. And where was that? Bimara, at the experience of Mara. In between Egypt and Harsinai, the Jewish people stopped at Mara, which is where the waters were bitter and the waters were sweetened for the Jewish people and they complained. But it's also a place where we believe some of the mitzvahs of the Torah were given to the Jewish people almost as a preamble to Matan Torah. It's something that uh, Rabbi Adler, my teacher, Rechana Adler, has written a lot about. He has a whole sefer about which mitzvahs were given at Mara and the whole analysis of that structure and why mitzvahs were given before Matan Torah. But uh, just going back to that section for a second, um, when the Jewish people reach Mara, it says, Sham Sam Lo Chok Umishvat Vesham Nisau. Over there, they gave them a Chok Umishvat, laws and justice, Vesham Nisau, and there they tried them. So Rashi quotes the Mamar Chazal, Gemara and Sanhedrin, which discusses this issue of what is Sham Sam Lo Chok what is the chok that was given to them at that point, the laws that were given to them. So sham samlo, bimara natalahem miktas parshiyo shaltor shis asku bahem. As almost like a trial balloon, as a way of getting them trained and used to the idea of mitzvahs, of commandments, which they would eventually be given at Har Sinai, some of the mitzvahs of the Torah were already given them to them at Mara. And which ones were they? So different Mamre Chazal uh, have different ideas of which mitzvahs were given at Mara, but the way Rashi quotes it is Shabbos, Para Aduma, Kibud Avaim, Vedinim. Shabbos, the mitzvah of Para Aduma, to, to purify people become defiled uh, from a dead body. Kibud Avaim, respecting our parents. And Dinim, the whole set of, uh, of laws, of justice, of court systems, all of that was given at Mara. So one of those is Shabbos. So now in our Pasuk, when it says, Shamor Siyama Shabbos Lakacho, Kashir Tzivashim Lakacha, we're remembering to keep Shabbos just like God had commanded us prior to Matan Torah at Mara. Okay, after you get the details of Shabbos, just going to our last piece of Rashi over here for today, um, there's an interesting Pasuk. 
after telling us to keep Shabbos and what that means and who's involved in the experience, Moshe reminds us, ki eved ha'isa be'eretz Mitzrayim. We should remember that we were slaves in Egypt. God took us out of there with a strong hand and an outstretched arm. And of course, the theme of us being Avadim is interwoven with Shabbos and other parts of the Torah as well. But certainly over here, we're told that we should keep Shabbos and that Shabbos should be for our Avadim as well, for our servants. And then we're reminded, you should remember, you were one servant, right? So it's almost like in between the lines, the Torah is encouraging us as it does so more explicitly in other places, but here implicitly telling us that we should treat our avadim, our servants with the proper respect because we should remember what it was like to be servants ourselves. Um, but somehow, um, but somehow we forget to do that. And therefore the Torah has to encourage us and remind us both explicitly and implicitly that um, that uh, we were avadim as well once upon a time in Egypt. But the end of this pasuk says, Al Kain Tivcha Hashem Lokecha Lasus Yom Shabbos. The Al Kain is what's interesting here. Therefore, God commanded us to keep Shabbos. What does the fact that we were slaves in Egypt have to do with keeping Shabbos? Al Kain Tivcha. Because of that, somehow because of our experience as slaves, we were given Shabbos. So on the surface, you might say, well, we knew what it was like to work all the time and to be enslaved to something. And therefore, Shabbos is an important thing for us to remember, to take a break from our labors. That's not altogether clear. Perhaps they had Shabbos in Egypt as well. So that's not altogether apparent. But what Ashi says over here is, Al-Minas came pidacha, shati lo le'eved, v'tishmor mitzvosav. It's perhaps not talking specifically about Shabbos, but about all the commandments of the Torah. Once the Torah is reminding us that we were slaves in Egypt, in the context here of receiving all these mitzvahs in the Atzeres Adebros, it's reminding us in a broad way, outside of Shabbos, in general, when it comes to mitzvahs, al kein sivcha Hashem lokech lasos. In general, al menas kein pedacha. The al kein is telling us that in general, God took us out of Egypt, not just to free us, and to create beings that could do whatever they want, but specifically to fulfill the mitzvahs of Hashem, to be avadim to Hashem. We weren't coming out of Egypt to take away the status of being avadim. We were taken out of Egypt to transform the status of avadim, from being avadim of paro to being avadim to Hashem, servants to paro and servants to Hashem. That manifests in very different ways. The experience would be, of course, very, very different, but in a broad sense, we were never to give up our mantle as avadim, but rather to transform it and to transfer it into a different realm. And we're being reminded of that right here in the midst of Matan Torah. It's perhaps mentioned by Shabbos because the avadim theme is already mentioned over here, connected to the avadim that we're supposed to make sure are not working on Shabbos. So once it's mentioning avadim, it says al kein al menas kein pedacha, that in general we're supposed to be avadim to Hashem instead of the avadim that we were in Egypt. So that's why it's tacked on over here to Shabbos and it's couched in terms of lasos is yom ha-Shabbos, but Rashi's broadening that to the realm of al mitzvos as well. Something important for us to keep in mind, uh, something not easy to stomach, the idea of being an Eved, uh, even when it comes to being an Eved to Hashem, you know, especially modern bias uh, prevents us from thinking of ourselves as slaves. We like to have our freedom, our freedom of choice, our freedom of being, to choose the way that we want to be. It's a bit of a scary word and a scary topic for people who live in our contemporary world. But it's not a bad thing. Not something we should shy away from thinking about and trying to view ourselves in that way. I think shapes our entire experience of mitzvos and what it means to relate to Hashem. Uh, that we're here in the world with a purpose, and the purpose is to be avadim, not slaves, but servants of Hashem. Just like servants in the cadre of the king are respected people. They're people who are honored to serve. Uh, we are also honored to serve Hakadosh Baruch Hu, and ultimately our goal in life should be to do His will. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. You have a great day, too. Have a great day. Bye, Bye. 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 Bye.